Welcome to another Grimspeed video. My name is Will and today we're going to be talking about our universal manual boost controller. In this video you're going to see a user's guide for our manual boost controller as well as install tips. Now here are two of our manual boost controllers. The one on the left is in a fully closed full boost setting and the one on the right is in an open zero boost setting. Now we have a running scale up the side of our manual boost controller. This is for precision adjustments and also adjustments that are repeatable so you can always go back to the previous location or a previous boost setting. What else makes our manual boost controller unique though is that it uses two stainless steel balls in a dual ball detent system. You can hear the clicking there. You can go as fast as you want, backwards or forward. And what's nice is if you follow the scale, you can dial it to exactly where you want it. So in the fully closed position, we'll go down the range. As previously stated, this is over 250 way adjustable. One full revolution is 16 clicks. And each click is associated to about a quarter of a PSI and one full revolution around will bring you down one line exactly. So 16 clicks per line. Now we're going to focus on the assembly of our manual boost controller. The whole body and fittings will be completely assembled when you get them. However, the mounting bracket will be a separate piece. What we're going to do is take our two and a half millimeter Allen key and lock in both bolts to the body. And you're just going to want to make sure these are snugged up. Because of how small these bolts are, thread locker is not recommended. You could use a lighter grade, like a thread locker blue, if you so choose, but it might make it difficult because of how small the bolts are to be able to remove them without breaking your Allen key. These will stay nice and tight if you just snug them up though. The install we're doing today is on a Turbo Subaru. Now in our kit we have supplied a nut and bolt for mounting and multiple zip ties for another mounting solution if needed. On this Subaru, we chose the strut tower location to mount our manual boost controller. This is for two main reasons. One is that it allows adequate hood clearance, and the other is that it also allows adequate space to run the vacuum lines to the nipples. Now once you get it snugged up, you're going to want to give it a couple twists just to make sure it's not moving the manual boost controller. Once you find the exact desired location, you can then go and tighten down the manual boost controller and so that is in a rock solid mount. You will want this for ease of adjustability. Now where you mount it is going to be different on each car depending on the make, model, and year of your vehicle. However, we like this location because it's close to the OEM boost control solenoid. So that way the vacuum lines are going to be run in a very similar location. Now, to identify the nipples, the bottom one that is in line with our controller that goes through the body is the boost in. The side one is going to be the boost out. Now in this car, we are going to remove the vacuum lines off of the OEM boost control solenoid. We do not need this to operate in any sort of way. 
the, the manual boost controller will be taking over full duty of boost control. Now what's going to be common among all turbocharged vehicles is that there is going to be a wastegate to release exhaust gases and there should be a nipple on the compressor housing of the turbo. If there is not a nipple here, we will want to find another boost source for your manual boost controller. Now we're going to want to remove the vacuum lines that go to both the wastegate and to your boost source on your turbo. Here we used pliers for the clips and a flathead screwdriver to help leverage out the vacuum lines. We are going to want to completely remove these vacuum lines. We will not be using any part of them again. You may want to use the clips on the end of the vacuum lines, but as far as the actual lines go, we will want to replace them. Now some vehicles may have a vacuum line running from the OEM boost control solenoid back to the intake or inlet. We are going to want to remove this vacuum line and simply cap it at the intake or inlet. Now we're going to want to run a vacuum line from the side of our manual boost controller directly to the wastegate nipple. Some applications may require using a reducer in the vacuum line to get the optimum size vacuum line. Make sure you are using the right size vacuum line though because you do want a tight seal. Next, simply we're just going to run our vacuum line to the bottom of our manual boost controller, which will be going directly to our boost source. 